Testament, written in Greek, wisdom sapientia, sapientia, feminine, wisdom is feminine, personified as a woman. And so it's she who has built her house. A little bit about what this house is, or what the house might be, but we know, as the Bible says, the Lord does not build the house in vain, he builds build his labor. It's really the Lord's house, house of God. And there are the seven pillars. What does that mean? Well, there are a lot of different themes or theses or ideas. Seven, of course, is a very symbolic number. Probably the best guess is the seven pillars set up in a courtyard in front of the house. Times in Greece, Palestine, and Christ days. Uh, the more pillars you had in the courtyard, the bigger, the better, the nicer your home was. And so we have its seven pillars, very big and elegant and beautiful house. <laughs> so thinking of this artist who are like wisdom, not too big, not too elegant, all apart in some places, but still, myself, all of us here, and it's been so many generations of Catholics, this house, Tremendously naming those past through well. The house of God, built by the in the middle of a secular campus dedicated not to wisdom, but to knowledge. And so, yes, wisdom has built her house, the church. The sinner, John Mark Hall, is a building, it's a place. Ours 
for the chapel. A little bit of land. Love that. I don't care. I also like right over there inside all the masses. It's the birds of a bunch of pizza, pepperoni pizza. Not pepperoni pizza. Grapes. And then that back window over there, all the sacraments, can't really see it. Uh, it's sacrament matrimony. It's pomegranate. It looks like Audrey Jr. from the Little Shop of Horrors. The famous flight trap. Go check it out. So these little details here that I've come to appreciate. But also, yeah, Turkish hospitals out there during COVID. Um, the plaza with a lady in the front. I think things have been a lot to me, and I'm sure we all have our own, our own things that mean a lot to us. But the real issue is this. It's not good. You know, building, buildings go away. What makes wisdom, church, parish, neat, at least in our diocese, is unlike our Fatima, or Sacred Heart and Hill Flat, or St. Anne's and Mamu. People live here. They live here. 7 a.m., the cafe opens. Students start showing up. And they stay sometimes until 10 or 11 p.m. And again, I live here. I'm over there. I, I can't get from my office to my house without having to see 10 people. <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody. So I'm like, all right, hello, I'm going. But it's, it, it's, it's something that's different. You don't, you don't see that in other parishes. You don't have another parish where Father goes at 10 o'clock in his slippers and his it's almost basically his pajamas and his t-shirt to lock up, and he sees some guys sitting around the cafe. What the heck are you doing here? <laughs> Most people have not seen their priest in his pajamas. But this is, this, thank goodness, but this is what we have here. We have that tight counter where the rectory isn't where the priest goes to escape. We have people, meals that are there, have movie nights. Types of gatherings, even during COVID, everything shut down. People came to the church, pray, to hang out, to have a place to be able to go. And so, what happened, particularly with students, is I've noticed that it really is not just a building, but it's a home. And students have become so comfortable being here, sometimes too comfortable. I remember my first years here, for a number of students, two in particular, we had a habit of walking around barefoot around the student center. In the cafe, what are you doing? This, they wouldn't wear shoes. How much you thought to put your shoes on? This is not your house. Some of you may remember, back in the cafe, we used to have old like, chairs and couches. You know, getting rid of all those because you walk in here and people think that everyone had the African sleep and sleeping sickness. Sea supplies and everything. People sleep on the couches from everybody. It's like a colony of narcolepsy. <laughs> you get rid of all that. You're here to study and to pray and not to sleep. It's a level of comfort. Also, they remember that they had a problem with students leaving their garbage everywhere. They're trashing their stuff and forget about it in the student center. So I felt like I had enough of it. I became confiscating things. And if you wanted to back, they'd buy it back from you for a piece of dollar. I was in the office and by the end of the semester, if you didn't bring it buy it back, I got to keep it. I got a nice collection of Getty mugs, <laughs> with some really nice rain jackets. In fact, a couple of times, people bought their textbooks out of the and got about 80 bucks for them. <laughs> Good morning. 
kitchen and, and somebody cooking stuff in the microwave. We're going to find out that the woman, this is before we locked the account, was sneaking at night and sleeping in the other room. And then she'd come back and say, Live, my tongue is dead. Just live in the house. Come, place to go. Even seminarians. This is the first year that I've been this forever before. They had the first year, and I seminarian will go and name. Now, I had to leave for Christmas. Sometimes, as the Corinthians 
get a discipline that kick the app is usually twice a year at 9 p.m. mass. And friends get fed up.
So I don't know how this began. Actually, I don't know how it began. And when I told a story, first year here, about when I was crazy and in high school and college, saved a friend of mine who was drowning in a riptide. Maybe me and my buddy had been drinking too much in spring break. But we still went out there and rescued him. And then when I got back, a big red mark on my chest. Didn't know what it was. So I went to the dermatologist and Dr. Oh, they're going to get a piece lately. Yeah. That's done by a person who's been at war. You didn't feel it? <laughs> Conversation in there. It must have been. <laughs> so the next, a few days later, I walked in my office, and there were about 10 little mobiles of a person at a war. And I began to practice it every year for my birthday or and decorated my office. I'm still about halfway with balloons. I'm actually in the direction of my office with googly eyes everywhere. Not the best, was excited to take this little bit of cups and put them in our cup of all up like half of the water and put me a hundred and fifty on my floor. Where I really couldn't get in my ass. And it was very funny. But until I say, you could better go pick up all this crap. I'm not doing this at all. I didn't think about that. It was completely worth it. I think one of my highlights, but my biggest highlights, we'll talk about, about my last time, a couple of years ago, when I was around on Facebook and right around Halloween, something called me. Remember this? And I saw that there was this clown in town that paid 30 bucks, which was very nice. That's the best 30 bucks I'll ever spend.
takes them out and all that stuff. So we're riding back. I'm exhausted. We pull about a ride. And the bus drivers were a little weird. We don't know that it's with the trip, but they were drinking one night. We called Paul and said some rude things. He thought we were very, very funny. <laughs>
spiritual father or something. I've learned that fruitfulness, patience, marriages, and people having children and coming back for baptisms, and so many things in their faith. And probably though the best example of this, funny, but that, that you get to see me in the good times of that time. Way that you don't see other parishes. Give me the other day.
smallest virtue. I have physical biological kids. I don't have a wife. Okay, I hate wives who work in office. <laughs> but I understand you have to forgive people you live with. So mercy there. You get angry, blow up, you forgive.
back. Tom, um, over here in the party, is telling the stories of wisdom. And I think for me, seeing that great blessing, seeing the paper, but more importantly, no, really begin realizing this. The students who were 18, 19 years old when I got here are 30 now. And I have seen them grow up and become adults. Even though, yes, I'm still the priest and the spiritual dad, that made me become friends. And then I hope and pray the last of my lifetime. Millionaires, and maybe have a beach house in Florida, or maybe in the mountains that I can go retire at. Yeah. Just remember that. It's married over there. I'm coming over there. And you know that I always saw them come back, but I've come across the past. There's this still remains their home. Of course, after so many years of Now my time is just about four months for me to leave home. All uh, I am at the present moment right now to leave about what um, years reflecting on so many memories. I've never been at a parish for this long and particularly one vibrant name living friends and relationships. And I'll be honest, but Notice how many of those 
idols, Mary referred to buildings or containers or enclosed spaces, spiritual vessel, vessel of honor, singular vessel of devotion, tower of David, tower of ivory, house of gold, ark of the covenant, refuge of sinners. So that Mary was that container, that house, Jesus, house that wisdom built seven pillars. Most important part of that enclosed space, eyes womb, house of the Son of God, be her heart. Pure heart filled with the Spirit. And that wisdom's true home. Within the Immaculate Heart of Mary, preached about it in Easter of last year, just as John took Mary into his home, who precipitated, Mary took John and all of us into her home, and into the purity and sanctity of the refuge of her Immaculate Heart. The line, prayer, mission, that we, of course, thanks to the we have here, that we can find refuge in our latest hearts, and that by performing our hearts to her and her sons, that our heart will come home for others. And so tomorrow, the theme of the topic will be the second part of praise. Notice, focuses on and centers on the thing that's almost a thread continuity throughout my 11 years here. Probably the most important thing or things about Jesus, next to Jesus, we have here wisdom. And that's eating and drinking. Almost everything we do connects back food, drink. I want to reflect a bit on that in a physical sense. That was some funny stories. Also, the deeper spiritual sense. So, I want to close with a prayer. I don't know what we're going to be doing afterwards, but it is a prayer um, to God, like the confession of our Lady Seat Wisdom. Prayer together. God of Wisdom, your desire to restore us to the fellowship and the of sin. You chose the blessed Virgin Mary for wisdom. Grant to her intersection, not seek wisdom of the proud, humility and treasure to reveal wisdom. For our wisdom, the Son of the Lord, the man of unity, the Spirit, God, and forever. Amen. So, Thank you to all y'all for coming. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a period of adoration. Every day, Monday through Thursday, we have an adoration period at 8 9 p.m. Every other Monday, a whole worship. We're going to average this year from day 7 or 8.